like this, and we're going to pre-tin both sides of that, and we're going to tack those on. And from this point, your biquad's built. However, I would actually sit there and try to readjust all of the um, all of the elements very gently, and then using the meat skewer yet again, you can easily just go along this track and see where you have a low point and readjust, making sure that you're one eighth wavelength apart from the reflector. Side's a little low. There you go. Biquad's built. Now what we got to do is go to the uh, computer side, and well, now that I look at it, the uh, the elements are a little mangled. I'm gonna go ahead off camera, and I'm gonna try to clean them up a bit. That's gonna be a boring process. And um, I'm gonna go to Netstaller and see uh, how this thing performs. All right, it's not the prettiest thing I've ever made, but with a can of a uh, matte black spray paint. Wouldn't look too bad. Check out the show notes. I'll put some links to my Picasso page where I've actually made a really nice looking bi-quad with uh, a portable pro uh, tripod. This is just a little desktop camera tripod with a 90 degree angle bracket so that way I can actually stand the thing up. Got Netstumbler going. Let's see what Netstumbler says about this antenna. Shabby, huh? From the uh, typical internal antenna to the bipod. Now look at all, all these access points. Now if I actually take the uh, the, the bipod and pan around, you'll see a whole bunch more access points start popping up. Now, like I said, the bipod will give you anywhere from six to eight decibels of gain, so that's almost double, if not 1.5 times your uh, your actual uh, signal strength. Every three decibels, now, I don't think I've explained decibels, and why is NetStumbler in the negatives? NetStumbler is measuring loss between your access point, free air, to your computer, or to your receiver, and it's measured in negative decibel gain, meaning that's how many decibels you're losing. Ideally, zero decibels mean no loss whatsoever. So by having a zero decibel, which means you have 100% signal, you're losing nothing. Now right now, this antenna is actually should be giving us um, three de no, sorry, six decibels of gain. Every three decibels, you double your, your signal quality. You double your power. So this is giving us anywhere from six to eight. So it's either triple or better than a typical antenna. And as you saw with the internal antenna on my on the on the computer, we're getting 90 decibels of loss. With this antenna, we're getting about 70. And if I actually position the antenna to where the access point is, being a directional antenna, you can actually pinpoint where the access point's actually located, or a rough idea. So if we were to actually go through NetStumbler, let's go to a DayZ05. Anything there? Nope. How about Big Daddy? Okay, Big Daddy must be pointing where? Honestly, I have no idea. Uh, there should be a couple of Linksys. Ah, uh, here we go, Linksys. I know one of these Linksys is actually pointed way up there. Which one? I don't remember. I think it's this one. Now keeping in mind that I'm inside my house right now that's completely made out of brick and the walls are actually lined with a wire mesh because of the uh, the construction age. It, it, we use like stucco and, and all that crap on the walls and such. So right now this antenna is actually performing quite admirably even though it's just half-assed. It's just some wire, a connector, some screws, an old CD spindle. Oh, 
And if you wanted to see what this would actually look like, here's a 50 pack. Ah, come on. Yeah, that's what it would look like with a 50 pack. So if you can get your hands on a 25 pack or such, great. Now, um, I have figured out a way to cut down the CD spindles. You take some masking tape, some actual, or painter's tape, and you take a mathematical compass, like I've been using in a lot of the antenna segments to measure the actual diameter and lengths of things in metric. And you, you scribe a circle all the way around, and using a hacksaw or another tool, you cut it. But these tops are tapered, meaning it's a smaller diameter at the top than it is at the bottom. So, if you cut this, it's not going to fit around the actual grooves of, of the CD spindle. You'll have to take a heat gun. A hair dryer will not work, I've tried. Use a heat gun, or put the thing inside of a toaster oven for a little while, soften up the plastic, go and get some glue, put the glue around the edge of the actual CD spindle, and wedge the thing on, and clamp it there. You'll have to take something and clamp the top and the bottom. Um, again, look at my Picasso page, on the, I'll link to it on the forums, as well as the show notes, and um, I'll show you what that looks like in the after process. So this is a bi-quad antenna. To tell you the truth, it's my favorite of all antennas so far. It's better than a waveguide, better than a compact collinear, better than a Yagi. It's, it's small, it's portable, offers a bit of gain, and when you got a satellite dish um, and you put it at the end of the arm, the gain is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm going to end the segment here, so have some fun if you have any questions or comments. IRC, you should already have the address, it's on our homepage, it's also on the website, you can all go through, uh, you can IRC through the website, check out the show notes that are on the forums, or contact me through the forums. Alright everyone, don't steal Wi-Fi, especially mine.